Good morning. Hey, good morning. This is Don from Truck em Up 88. How are you doing today? Excited about getting your license, I hope. We're gathered here today to learn about the required CDL air brakes and pre-trip tests that you must successfully perform to receive your Class A commercial driver's license. As you may know, the four air brakes tests must be done exact. These are the only pass-fail tests, and you must get them right. The in-cab pre-trip and the outside pre-trip are scored together and are points to lose. Get it 100% and don't give the examiner anything but the right stuff. That's an old motto that I just made up. <laughs> now, before we go outside, I want to thank Simeon and Tony Martinez, owners of TMT Industries out of Southern California. They have made available their awesome equipment for the purposes of this vid video to help kickstart the next generation of drivers. Young and innovative ideas rooted in a solid old school foundation looking to secure the future of their company and ultimately their employees. That is who TMT is and who TMT will continue to be. Thank you again very much. So now let's go outside to this fine equipment and do what you came here to see. Okay, hey, I told you we was coming outside here to take care of this business, right? With that said, we're gonna start off with those four air brake tests that I told you about that have to be pass fail. Remember, we gotta be perfect on those and then we'll get into the in, in cab and then to the outside. Sometimes I try to just do this as if I am a student going through this, but I ultimately end up trying to explain things as they go. So I'm just going to ad lib it and let things happen the way they do. But at the very end of everything, I'm going to give you exactly what you need to be able to say to pass this test. You've got to have this. It's your future. So pay attention to this. And don't forget one more time, if you like it, hit the like button and subscribe would be very cool. You know what, if you don't like it, hit the don't like button. I wanna hear about, uh, you know, everything good or bad, all right? Cause this is really all about you. So anyway, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so i uh, just, don't forget the wheels are chucked when you start this all out. Good points of contact getting in, remember? You don't have to tell them this anymore, but you just have to do it because they're going to be watching for it. The three points is three, two hands and one foot or two feet and one hand, remember, at all times. Before you do anything, I mean anything at this point, other than maybe shutting the door, is put on your seat belt. If you do anything in this cab without this seat belt on, it is automatic failure. Put on your seat belt. Okay, there you go. When you get in, that's the first thing that you're gonna do, right? Then you're gonna tell the examiner, Mr. or Miss or Ms. Examiner, all of the PSI numbers that I'm gonna be using for these air brake tests are all manufacturer specs. For my first test, gotta have the truck running. You gotta do a safe start on this now, right? You don't have to tell them anymore that, that you're doing a safe start. You just have to do it because they're going to be watching for you. This is an automatic truck, safe start, both park and brake set, transmission in neutral. That's it. Turn the key on, let everything stabilize and, and do its thing on the dash. Fire that up. My first test is the air gauge and governor cutoff check. What they're looking for on this, and what you're going to say is, is that my air gauge is working. 
And if you have a primary and a secondary gauge, we're going to just go ahead and indicate at this time that that it is the uh, primary gauge you're going to be using throughout all this test, so you don't have to keep saying that. But you're going to tell them that my air gauge is working, and as soon as it does, you're going to tell them that the governor has cut off, and um, you're ready for the next one. If the air is down a little bit, you can you can give it some acceleration to get it to go up a little bit faster. But basically, you're just watching for that gauge. Okay, and my governor has cut off at 120 PSI, so that's a good check. For my next three tests, remember, uh, you got to have the engine off and the brakes released and the key in the on position. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to turn the key off, put it back in the on position, and we're going to release both parking brakes. And we're going to get this, this parking brake um, warning because that's what it does when the parking brakes are set or, or are released. So we'll have to deal with it. My first check is the air gauge and governor cutoff check. My air gauge is working and the governor has cut off because the needle has stopped rising. It's cut off at 125 PSI right there. For the next three tests, I have to have the, the engine off and the brakes released and the uh, key in the on position. The, the wheels are chalked and that's, that's why they are. I'm gonna release these brakes. I'm gonna put my foot on the brake. I'm gonna wait for my air gauge to stabilize. This is the air leakage rate test. For this test, I cannot lose more than four PSI in a 60 second period. As soon as my gauge stabilizes, it's this air gauge right here. You can see it's stabilized at 100 PSI. And my 60 seconds is starting now. Okay, so we're gonna do this for the sake of the video. The 60 seconds is up. My air gauge is reading at 95, 96 PSI, so it did not lose more than 4 PSI. This is a good test. So now I can take my foot off the brake. You don't want to take your foot off that brake until after you've done this test and you've showed them the mathematical equation uh, that it was done right. So don't let your foot off the brake until you're done with this test. Now you can. Okay. My next test is going to be my air warning devices test. A light and buzzer, there is no flag, must come on no lower than 55 PSI. I'm going to fan my brakes, push on them, and release them to, to expel the air. And I'm going to watch my gauge, and we're going to see when that, pot, when that comes on. There's my low air warning light and buzzer just came on and it came on at 60 PSI. So this is a good test. Uh, my next test and my last test is gonna be my emergency brake test. This emergency valve here along with the tractor protection valve, which, it, that, which this red knob controls must pop out between 20 and 45 PSI. This is a tractor parking brake knob. There is, for some reason, they are deciding at, when you are doing your test at the DMV that they are acting like this is the tractor protection valve. It is not, but they expect a reading for this. So, this is the one for the test. We're going to give this one to them because that's what they want to hear. And both of them must pop out between 20 and 45. This one will pop out first. If this one does not pop out with it, then I'll pump the brakes another time or two until it does. And I'll give that reading. We're watching these. There it is. See, it just popped out. That popped out at 35 PSI. Now we're going to pump again until this one does. 
Okay, there, you see that one just popped out there also. That one popped out at 20 PSI. This one would not matter, but I'm glad it popped into the number so they can't give me an argument with it. But that's the one that came in and popped out at 30. This is a good test. Okay, so for, I got two more air brake tests. One of them is the parking brake test. The other is the service brake test. I got to build my air up for that, right? So um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fire the truck up. I'm going to get out and I'm going to remove the chocks because I need to be able to move the truck and the park and brake test would be negated without it. Uh, and then I will be right back in. And then when I get back in the truck and the air is still building up, I'm going to go ahead and do my in-cab portion of the pre-trip. Don't forget when you're getting out of the truck, you got to use three points of contact also. Climbed up like a ladder, you're going to go back down like a ladder. Same way, backwards, right? So we're back in the truck, uh, we removed, removed the chocks, we used the three points of contact to get in and out and put our seatbelt back on. Now we're going to, while the air pressure is building up, we're going to go ahead and do the in cab portion of the air brakes, uh, of the uh, pre-trip, okay? So uh, we'll start that off. Turn it off, turn it back on. Okay. My ABS light on the dash, and then there's also an ABS light uh, at the at the left side of the trailer back here. They came on and off, so that's all working fine and proper, right? All right, my def tank is working and it's reading full. There is no DPF gauge. Uh, my left turn signal, my right turn signal, my four-way indicators and my bright lights are all working properly. I have three red reflective triangles in my side box. I have a fully charged secure fire extinguisher in my side box and I have some extra fuses over here in my glove box. My windshield is uh, clean it is free of any debris. There's no cracks or chips or uh, any uh, illegal stick. My mirrors, which are now called which are now called the monitoring devices, are clean and adjusted to me uh, using this control right here. My windshield wipers are working, and there's washer fluid coming out the way it's supposed to. The wiper arms and the blades are not damaged. Uh, they are securely mounted and working properly. My heater. And my defroster are working properly. My horns, my electric city horn is working. My highway air horn is working properly. Okay, so now that's going to take care of the in-cab portion. Now we're going to do the park and brake test. We're going to move the truck here just a little bit, or at least try to, right? So first of all, we want to keep an eye on these valves right here. We're going to test the tractor brake, parking brake first. So the yellow knob is out, your foot is not on the brake, the red knob is in. Okay, that one's in. Now the only brake, parking brakes that are set are the tractor. Put it in gear. Do a little tug. Yep, see, there it is. It's holding good. So now we're going to check the trailer. We're going to set the trailer parking brake, release the tractor parking brake. 
do the same thing. We're going to give it a little tug. Oh, see that held too. You know what else? This is also the way that I test when I'm hooking up my truck to the trailer that the uh, lock and jaws are secure around the kingpin. I'll give it a little tug test that same way. All right. So now the next test is going to be the service brake test. And for this test, we're going to release both parking brakes. We're going to move forward at about five miles an hour and come to a stop. All right. See now the truck didn't move left or right, that, and uh, it stopped when I put my foot on the brake. <clears throat> All right, so that's going to finish off the in cab portion of the test here. Uh, the next one we're going to do is the external light check, and uh, this truck's got an automatic checker, so we're going to get out of the truck and we'll be out of the truck for the re remainder. Okay, so we've turned on this truck, it has a switch to test all the lights on it so you can turn that switch on take a walk around the truck make sure all your lights are working right okay so that's what we're doing so our turn signals are working left and right turn signal headlights bright lights clearance lights are all working proper right all right walk down the side we have a turn signal right here on the tractor that's working properly Got marker lights and clearance lights all the way down the side. Got your turn signal here that is also a marker light. All the way back down to the side. They are all working proper. The ABS light is off the way it should be. Coming back to the back side of the trailer. Turn signal, left and right turn signals are working. Wait a second for the brake lights. There your brake lights are working. All the, the clearance lights up at the top are working. So all of our external lights are working properly. So we've done all the lights, they're all working good. Now we're gonna start the outside part of the pre-trip, okay? We're gonna start right off at the front. I have to say, since they changed all of this back in July, um, as much trouble as I give the DMV and the feds, they did a good job on making this more realistic to what you're going to have to be doing in the real world versus what you had to do before to take this test. So all you got to do on the front of the vehicle is you got to talk about your lenses. You got these lenses here, down here, one here and one here, and then you've also got your lenses on your clearance lights up there. And all you're going to have to do is say that my lenses are all uh, securely mounted, they're free from damage, and they are the proper color. And that takes care of the entire front end. From that point, now you're gonna have to open up the hood and let's do that and get into the engine. Everything we're gonna do is gonna be done from the left side of the engine and the truck. So that's a good thing. And we're only gonna have to deal with the steer axle not have to do anything on the rear axles any longer now this is really when using this checklist is going to become very important for you on this when you are learning all of this and you're in your classrooms or over at your yards and you're learning about the air brakes and the pre-trip be sure you incorporate this checklist Right, you're going to develop this routine and if I, I guarantee you you're going to take this checklist on on test day it's it's a comfort list okay if you don't get used to doing this and put this in your routine on that test day you're going to try to incorporate it into your test and you're going to screw it up if you only use this to do the ones that you have a little bit of trouble with when it comes down to trying to do that, you're gonna be struggle finding which one it is and you're gonna screw it up. So just incorporate it in everything, okay? Especially from out here. So now, we did the front of the vehicle, going by the checklist now, right? Engine area, we did the lenses, 
Now the fluid levels. There are three fluid levels that you have to talk about and that's it. You see this yellow? This is your oil dipstick, okay? This is your power steering fluid. This is your coolant level. Those are the three level of three fluids that you have to talk about only. And you can incorporate all of them in the way that I would say it is, is my oil, my power steering, and my coolant levels are all at proper operating levels. The examiner might say to you, how do you know they're at proper operating levels? And your answer is, is because they are between the add and the full. Just nice and easy like that, okay? All right, so, but now you have to talk about whether or not there's any leaks or any air leaks at all that you see around here. So, what you're gonna end up doing is the same thing. My oil, all, my oil and my uh, power steering reservoir and my coolant reservoirs are all securely mounted. They are not leaking. All the caps are tight and they are not leaking. And all the service lines that go in and out of all those areas are undamaged and they are not leaking and they are securely mounted um, and there is no air leaking pre present that we can hear right now there you just took care of that now we have to go to the steering system okay we try to make a, a routine about this not a whole lot you have to do about it other than to be able to point out what it is all right all you have to do we have the steering box here this is where it all starts Okay, it is securely mounted and not leaking, right? Then you would take this. We used to have to tell what these were, the pitman arm and the drag link and the tie rod. We don't have to do that anymore, but you do have to say that there, there is no damage to any of the steering system at, at all as you're drawing along it, showing that you know what it is. Also, there are three castle nut and cotter keys on this linkage. You don't have to point them out, but you have to remember to say, and there are no missing nuts or bolts because we got nuts and bolts such as this one, but this is your cutter. This is your castle nut and cotter key down here. So there's no missing nuts or bolts and no missing um, castle nuts and cotter keys. Also these, these joint sockets right here. Okay. And there's one right here too that you're gonna say, and the joints are not worn or loose. So that's all you're gonna end up saying like that. Um, it, it's pretty easy going as far as all that goes, okay? That takes care of the steering system. Now we have to go to the tire. Don't forget, you want to incorporate this checkoff list as you're going, and that's what I'm doing. I'm not checking them off, but um, you're gonna probably want to, but we did our lenses, our fluid level, fluid air and leaks, and the steering system. Now on the on the list is tires. The tires are they are um, securely mounted. There's no cuts. There's no bulges. There's no uh, bumps. There's no abrasions. There's no damage to it whatsoever across all of the uh, uh, outside sidewall and also the inner sidewall. There's no damage or anything to that either. Also across the entire tread section, there's no cuts or bulges or damage at all. And the entire tread is greater than 430 seconds uh, of, of depth. And I know that because I checked it with a um, commercial tire depth gauge. Okay. <clears throat> That's what you're gonna say about the tire. Now we're gonna talk about the rims. The rims are securely mounted. There's no damage to them. There's no cracks and there's no welds, all right? And the holes here are not elongated in any way, shape, or form. I know you can't see that on these ones, but on the truck that you're gonna be doing your test with, you'll be able to, and that's what you're gonna say about them. But these look so nice, I'm not gonna take them off, okay? So, but I tell you, there's no elongated holes that you need to talk about on that, right? Uh, and the uh, valve stem is present. There's, is, the valve stem is present. There's no damage to it and the cap is there and it's on and tight. All right. So there you have. Now your lug nuts. The lug nuts are the lug nuts are all present. There's no no signs that there's any looseness. Uh, if there was something loose, there may be some rust trails or something um, from the backside of it or whatever. But as you can see, uh, there is no signs of that. And the lug nuts or the the, the studs themselves 
uh, are not elongated or bent or uh, damaged in any way, shape, or form on that. Listen, this is a good example. I, I missed something on the tires, okay? Uh, and if you miss something on the, any of this stuff, you can come back to it and get the point. But um, I forgot to say, I did say that the, that the tread was greater than 430 seconds, but I forgot, oh, I'm sorry. My bad, I did that one. Uh, the inflation. The inflation is a proper uh, inflation using a commercial tire gauge. That's the part that I forgot about it. So uh, if you forget about it, you come back and say it, you'll get the point. All right. Cool. Okay, so we did our tires and rims and lug nuts. Now we're going to go to our springs and spring mounts. Our springs right here are securely mounted. They're not shifted, cracked, or broken. The spring hangers or spring mounts, either one you want to call them, are not cracked or broken. They're securely mounted. They're not missing any parts. The shock right here, securely mounted. There's no damage to it, and it is not leaking. Okay, so that was the spring and the spring mounts. Now we're talking the brake lines and hoses. And hoses. This is the one that they're talking about on this. All right, they're asking about this, uh, and they're you're just going to be end up saying it's securely mounted. It's got securely uh, mounted fittings. It's not cut or damaged, or crimped or uh, broken in any way, shape, or form, and it's fully functional. Putting air to the to the to the brake. The inside of the rim right here is dry. There's no oil or grease or anything that would uh, maybe hinder the braking process of that brake. All right, so side of the vehicle, lenses and reflectors. All right, we got lens here. We got lenses every, about looks like every seven or eight feet, all the way across the top and all the way across the bottom. We got a turn signal lens right there. We also got an ABS light uh, lens out there. They are all not damaged, they are all present and they are working. My traffic monitoring devices, also known as the mirror. The bracket is securely mounted, it's not cracked or broken, and the mirror itself is not cracked or broken. There's also not any missing parts at all on there. It's all put together good. All right, so my batteries. My batteries are securely mounted in the securely mounted battery box. All the lines are all tight. They're not cut or taped or frayed and there is no corrosion on them at all. And also while we're under here, I'm gonna talk about this is my death tank. Uh, the cap is on tight and no lines are leaking on it. So then this takes us to the fuel tank. Uh, fuel tank is securely mounted. The cap is on tight and it's not leaking and all the lines are secure, uh, not damaged and not leaking. Um, okay, so now the frame, the tractor frame. Got it all here, okay? The frame, there's no damage to it. There's no broken welds. There's no illegal welds. There's no holes to it in it or anything. There's, again, it's damage free. Uh, the frame of the trailer, okay? All the way down also is free from damage. There's no holes, cracks, or, or um, welds in, them, uh, in, in the frame of the trailer either. The sliding tandem Release arm and locking pins are uh, secure in their lock position and they're undamaged also. Okay, my supply airlines, okay, they are seated and sealed. Okay, they are not cracked, broken, cut, frayed, taped, uh, uh, chafed or spliced anywhere along the lines of it and they are locked into place. And those fittings are securely mounted also. The electric line is not cut, chafed, spliced, damaged in any way, and it is securely mounted. All the lines are free from tangle. They're not tangled, they're not crimped uh, or, or bent, and no part of it is touching any part of the frame of the tractor whatsoever. All right, my f we'll go under here. So my fifth wheel skid plate. The trailer floor itself is free from holes, breaks, and cracks. My fifth wheel skid plate right there is securely mounted to the fifth wheel platform. Right? And it has no cracks, breaks, or excessive wear, and it is properly lubricated. 
The kingpin is in place and is not bent, damaged, or worn, and it is also properly lubricated. The apron has, is not bent, cracked, or broken. Um, the trailer is lying flat on the fifth wheel, and there is no gap between the apron and the, and the skid plate. The lock and jaws are secure around the kingpin, and there is no free play at all. The release handle is in the lock position, and there is no safety latch. And the sliding fifth wheel locking pins are not damaged and are locked in place. My landing gear, my landing gear is is raised fully raised. There's no damage to the pet to the landing pads at all. Crank arm is secure and sitting in its bracket the way it's supposed to. All of the braces and the cross members all the way across. There's no damage to them whatsoever. And there is sufficient room between the rear of the tractor and the landing gear. So when I'm making turns, it won't cause any damage. To it. There is this kind of reflective tape all the way around the truck. Except for the front, there's no reason for that, but that's reflective VOT tape and it is all the way affixed, all the way around. Last but not least, we'll just get down with the rear of the trailer here. And if you've made it this far, then you know you passed all the air brake tests and all that stuff, get ready to do your skills test. So, the back of this trailer, all we have to talk about are these lenses. And there are five, one, two, three, four, five across the top up there, all right? Uh, they are securely mounted, they're not broken, and they're the right color. And that's all you have to say. So, you get this far, then you know you're, you're good. You're gonna continue on to do your skills test, and that'll be another department to take care of that, so. Uh, but if you do this the way that I've showed you here, you're gonna pass with flying colors. Okay, what'd you think? That's it. You just got it from the pro and you saw how it's supposed to be done. Now I purposefully missed a couple of very minor items as a training tool to see how long it takes for you to point them out. I do know for sure that if you follow my routine or implement it into your own routine, which is what should happen, with what you have heard and seen today, you will pass these parts of the big test. You are in the process of a very big step and need to soak in a lot of material in a short amount of time. Use this video as a training tool over and over until it's automatic. The finish line is right there. Now, truck them up and get across it. Hit that like or don't like button and please subscribe to my channel because I got to keep my wheels rolling. Oh, wait a minute. I'm okay. <laughs> I'm all right. I mean, I got to keep my, wi my videos rolling. <laughs> hey, we'll be looking for you for the next one, okay? Until then, if anyone asks, tell them I've gone trucking.